This is Rob Tebbett for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. Delighted, as always, to be joined on the phone today by Frank Warren. How are you, Frank? I'm fine, Rob. How are you? I'm very well, Frank. Very well. Um, as we just briefly mentioned off the phone, um, well, on the phone, but off the interview, bit bored, uh, not an awful lot going on. Uh, how are you finding lockdown? Um, I'm struggling a bit with it, but um, the main thing is to keep healthy. So that's 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 what it's all about. And that's what everybody's got to follow and do. Um, but it is, you know, it's, I'm always out and about, so it's a bit of a culture shock for me, but it's, uh, that's what it's like for everybody. So we just got to get on with it and it's better. It's better than the alternative. Bored out my brains, but other than that, I'm okay. Okay. All right. Well, we'll just go straight into it, Frank. Tyson Fury. seems like every time I open my laptop, there seems to be another story that's come out about him. Let's talk about, first of all, the glove gate issue, which is something that stemmed from the Wilder rematch. Now, I beg, I beg your pardon here, Frank, because I know you've been around the sport for a long, long time, and and what I'm going to ask you is going to sound very, very stupid. But do you believe there is any chance of him tampering his gloves in that rematch? Well, you just you just answered that question with your opening comments. It's stupid. I've never heard such bollocks in my life. I mean, you know, what planet are people on? Let me tell you what happens, because this is this this is what what amazes me when people come out with these things. And, and people in the sport who should know better. So what happens prior prior to the guys getting into the ring? They wrap their hands in the dressing room. And what happens? One guy from each camp goes to oversee it. Plus, you've got, in, in the, as far as the States was concerned, and, other, uh, and, and certainly in the UK and other commissions, a representative from the Nevada Commission uh, stands and watches and makes sure that the hands are wrapped correctly. And both of the, both sides watch that. They so then signs the reps. Then, when they're ready to glove up, again, somebody from either camp comes into the dressing room and watches him glove up. And then, what happens then? The gloves are taped. And then, the commissioner signs the tape. So... Your, your, your gloves are on tight. Now, anybody who knows what a boxing glove is, what, what you, you can't pull your hand up. They're taped. They're signed. That's what it is. And by the way, in the dressing rooms, as you see throughout that fight, there's a camera, a TV camera, which they keep going backwards and forwards, showing scenes from the dressing room. So how on earth would you do that? It's just the most ridiculous, pathetic, stupid thing I've ever heard. And anybody who even would even give it credence there's got to be an imbecile who knows nothing about the sport I can't really add anything to that Frank I do agree with what you're saying but as I'm sure you understand I do have to put the question to you I understand you've asked the question there was the answer (laughs) a resounding answer as expected um Another thing that's come out recently, obviously we had the um, the Tyson Fury UCAD story from 2015 has resurfaced with allegations in the Daily Mail from a farmer who alleged to have received or was promised to have received the payment from Tyson Fury and his team regarding that UCAD. That's not true. That's not true what you're saying. You said Tyson Fury and his team. That is not true. That's not what was said in the newspaper. It said Team Fury didn't say Tyson Fury. He, he said he was approached from somebody from Team Fury. Tyson's name n- n- has never been associated in any way in this story of having, first of all, Tyson denies knowing the farmer. And secondly, the farmer's not said at any stage that was he was approached by Tyson Fury or he was promised money by Tyson Fury to lie. He's never said that, so that's not true. They, what they said, it was somebody from Team Fury. And I got that call on a Friday night from the Mail a couple of weeks ago. Their story was going to run on the Sunday. And the reason they call me normally late on Friday night is it's too late to get to lawyers or it's too late to get to a court to get injunctions and so forth like that. But they did what they had to do. They did They did, did the story and they ran that story. And our questions I, the questions I asked the reporter were quite simple. Who? Who, if you you tell me the farmer said this, tell me who approached him. Because he wrote me a letter last year, I I thought it was October, it was in fact September, saying all this bullshit, and in the letter saying he was was supposed to get money. And I'm reading this, thinking this guy's gone and sworn affidavits, committed perjury, if he's saying what what he's saying now is true, committed perjury, and has lied, lied to everybody. Why is he writing to me? He's writing to me because he wants money. That's what it's all about. 
So he was told quite categorically, you've got a problem, take it to UCAD. That's where you should have gone. gone. Now, you're talking about 2015. And the fight, by the way, the, the, the fight was a 10-round fight. It wasn't a world title fight. It was a 10-round fight when it happened. And obviously, I had no... I, I had no dealings with uh, or was involved in this situation at the time. This was his previous management, uh, Mick Hennessy and, and co. So I had no dealings with it. But the bottom line of all of this is, and you look at it again logically, we're now in 2020. So five years later, this guy comes out the woodwork making these allegations that he lied then, now he's telling the truth. And who knows where he's telling the truth now or lying now. But one thing for sure, whatever he was doing, it was for money. And at the end of the day, as I've said, the only way you can, anyone can point the finger at Tyson Fury is if he did anything with this guy, and he never. That's never been in any newspaper, and I defy them to write that. And if they do, they know what will happen. They will be sued. So that's where we are. And I know that solicitors' letters have gone to the newspapers, concerned. So that's where they're at. They've, and, and, and as far as you, Caddy, are concerned, they, that if they're going to do something, then get on with it and do it, if they're going to do something. But the man they should be speaking to is this farmer. And I would think what he's done, if he's telling the truth now, which I don't know, I don't believe he is, but if he is telling the truth now, then he should be then it'll be a criminal investigation because he's committed perjury. That's that's kind of where I was going to go next with it, Frank. Why would somebody, after five years, perjure money. themselves and open themselves up to something money. like this? Money. Why did he go to UCAD? Why did he go to the Mail? What did he go to a newspaper for? Why did he? Why did he not just go to um, go to UCAD? That's what you should do. Well, I would have done. I said, the, you know, the statement I made, I've lied. Why would you go to the newspapers with it? And why would he write to me? I mean, you know, um, in the letter, at, right at the end, he's, he's saying to me, good luck in Vegas. I mean, what, what's he sending me letters like this for? I don't even know the man. All about money. It was all about money for him, one way or another. Do you expect UCAD to take this any further, Frank? No, I don't see... What we, if they're going to take it further. Not with Tyson, I don't. Might take it further with this bloke. I don't know, but they can't take it further with Tyson. Tyson, Tyson was out the ring for two years. That's the end of it. Moving away from that, obviously we're talking about Tyson Fury. It seems it seems so long ago now that we were talking about the potential for an undisputed title fight, purely because all of this stuff has kicked off. Does this, the whole coronavirus situation and, and the suspension of all sports, does that really put the halts and the skids on any potential undisputed fight happening for the foreseeable future? Yeah, of course it does. He's, first of all, he's got a contractual commitment, which uh, has been invoked by Deontay Wilder's team. So he's got to fulfil that obligation before we can even get there. Now, what the, what we were all hoping and what the intention was, was to get that fight out of the way in July. But obviously that's not going to happen. So when, when and, and in America's on lockdown now, the commissions out there, which are state appointed, they're saying no boxing. And the, and the contract states that the rematch must take place in the States. Um, so... That's where we're at. So until that obligation is fulfilled, um, we we can't even look at Anthony Joshua fight. There was some. There was a story that came out yesterday. Uh, apparently, sources stated that that fight's now obviously was originally mooted for July 18th. Has been pushed back to October. Uh, what can you tell me about that, Frank? I couldn't tell you anything about it. Because <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, again, uh, who, uh, who knows what's happening? I don't look. You go. Know, Vegas is shut down. It's not just boxing. Vegas is shut down. They've laid off all the casino workers. All the hotels and the casinos are shut down. Who knows what's going to happen? Will there be talks surrounding that potential fight in the future while we're in this off-season? It seems, well, not even off-season. Of course, well, of course there'll be talks, but, you know, what are you going to talk about? <laughs> the, the first thing is, what dates are it going to be? You know, I think everybody's... Nothing's going to happen. I mean, every, you know, unfortunately, like, like you don't know when you're going to be out to go out and filming people again, do you? Yeah. It's like me saying to you, when are you going out to... When are you, gonna, when are you going to come... When are you, you and I going to sit down and do a film interview? You can't tell me. So I can't, I can't tell you when, when a fight's going to be on. We're in the same position as everybody. 